Is your computer slow? You might not have enough RAM for Windows. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com. You know, it's no secret, Windows loves RAM. Honestly, it's one of the recommended upgrades, if possible, that I jump to immediately when people are experiencing a variety of different kinds of performance issues, one of which being slowdowns. So why might you not have enough RAM? And why might a machine that was working well just get slower over time? Let's start with a clarification. RAM is that memory used to hold the programs that are running and the data that they use in your computer. RAM is basically lost as soon as you turn off your computer. And in fact, most of your boot process is all about reloading things into RAM. When you turn on your computer, most of what it means to be booting your computer is getting all of the software running, which means loading it into RAM, loading its data into RAM, and letting it do whatever it's supposed to do. So, like I said, RAM is the stuff that matters when you're running programs. Now, Windows, as I said earlier, Windows loves RAM. The more RAM, the better is the rule of thumb in most cases. The trick, of course, is that Windows will indeed continue to try to run even if it doesn't have, quote unquote, enough RAM. Now, what is enough depends on what you're doing. If we take a real quick look at the virtual machine that I've been running here for many of these Ask Leo videos, you'll see that it actually only has two gigabytes of RAM. When it comes to Windows 10, Honestly, that's not a lot. And in fact, if I start to do something serious with it, like I start to use a word processor or a photo editor or, uh, Lord help me, a video editor, that's going to cause me some serious performance issues on this machine because Windows will try to run. It will do its darndest, even though what really needs more than the two gigabytes of RAM I have installed. What it does is it uses what's called virtual memory. Virtual memory is essentially using disk space as if it were RAM. Now, one of the reasons RAM is so important is because, well, it's fast. It's the stuff that you're using right now. Disk is slower. It can remember things longer, but actually reading from and writing to disks are slower. So when Windows starts to use disk as RAM, then your system starts to slow down. Windows will try really, really hard to keep things running. But of course, at some point, it's possible that the performance will become so degraded as to be unacceptable. That's the situation sometimes we find ourselves in when the computer we have doesn't have enough RAM to do the things we're trying to do. Maybe we're on the edge. Maybe we're just slowly starting to do more things than we used to. Maybe the machine for which two gigabytes used to be plenty of RAM, well, Windows has gotten a little bit bigger. The applications have gotten a little bit bigger. What we're asking Windows to do has gotten a little bit bigger. Very slowly, things have been increasing such that the RAM demands we're making of our system that at one point used to be handled quite handily by our machine, not being handled quite so handily so as much. And Windows is finding itself having to go to hard disk, having to use virtual memory in order to keep up with everything as it slowly grows over time. That's one of the reasons, one of the ways that system performance can degrade over time. Systems, the software, the applications, and our demands very slowly grow, and as soon as they approach or cross the threshold of the amount of available RAM on your system, things will start to slow down. Now, there are two solutions. First, of course, is, well, don't try to do so much, right? Um, the, the, the classic scenario that I see people doing all the time is, you know, if you've got a dozen tabs open in your browser, well, each one of those is gonna require a little bit of extra RAM. Don't do that. Go back to six or three or one and see if your performance overall doesn't improve. In other words, 
scale back what it is you're asking your system to do so that you're not making as many demands of its RAM. The other solution, again, if possible, is to add more RAM. This is one of the reasons that whenever I purchase a new machine, and I recommend that when you purchase a new machine, you get the RAM you need, but you also make sure that there's room for more. Because at some point, things are going to get bigger, be it the operating system, the applications, or the things you do, so that you will again find yourself approaching that threshold, approaching that barrier that says, you know what, you really want more RAM than you have installed in your system. And yes, every machine I've done that to has absolutely had a longer lifespan because I ordered it with X amount of RAM and eventually I added more. That allowed me to use that machine longer without having to replace it for something more capable. Now, of course, not every machine can be upgraded beyond the RAM that's installed. For example, my older machines, once I upgraded them, I upgraded them to contain the maximum amount of RAM that that motherboard or that system would allow. Again, things continue to grow so that eventually even that threshold would be reached. At that point, the only option I had was to do less, which I would, of course, do for a while, but eventually things would conspire and it would be time for me to get a new machine. And I would reset my thresholds so that the new machine would have more than enough RAM and still have room for even more for someday in the future. So one of the things to look at when your system is performing poorly is how much RAM you have, how much RAM the system is really trying to use, and what are all the applications installed on your system doing? Are they running? Are they all running? And are they all trying to eat away at the amount of available RAM you have? It's possible that this is something that you can adjust, control, or upgrade depending on your specific situation. The true bottom line is that when it comes to RAM, more is better. Uh, it's always better to have more than you need than not enough. Fortunately, within reason, having not enough RAM is something that Windows will try very, very hard to compensate for and at least let you try to get your work done, albeit somewhat more slowly. For updates, for links related to the article on which this video was based, uh, for comments and so forth, visit askleo.com slash 125909. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.